Welcome to the Pigment Podcast. Today I'm going to continue why I love working with pigments, why I'm fascinated by them and why I even call them my passion. So in my first episode I left some things out and one very important thing I left out is basically because as a paint maker I don't really notice it. I talked about um, the personality of pigments, how they act on my slab or uh, when I make a swatch out of it, how it dances on the paper. This takes a little while to notice. For me as a paint maker, it's on the labels of the pigments that I buy, or the data sheets if they don't have labels. It is basically on every paint that you buy because of a very good reason. It is of very big influence for the end user. Whether you make a plastic out of a pigment, whether you paint a car with it, whether you um, want to make a piece of art out of that pigment, painting, drawing, sculpture, whatever, it is light fastness. Light fastness, in a very short explanation, is basically how much color is left after it is exposed to UV for a certain amount of time. So UV breaks things down. When you leave something outside, um, it, 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 it gets destroyed, broken down by UV. Same goes for pigments. So color gets broken down. But most pigments we have now, most modern pigments, are way more resistant to that than the pigments that we used to have. So that's why loads of pigments are discontinued because of their poor light fastness rating. So th they are rated in different skills. I will talk about that in a, in a different video. Um, uh, but simply put, when we put it one to 10, or in my pants, uh, one, two or three stars, um, one to 10 is more accurate, obviously. There are pigments that are 10 out of 10. That are, there are pigments that are just 1 out of 10. Fluorescent pigments are 1 out of 10. If you put, put them in direct sunlight for a few days or even a few hours, in some cases, they fade. They lose chroma. They just get a... They, they turn into a pastel version of what they used to be. And sometimes they even lose so much of their color that you don't know if it, it was a, uh, an orange or a green or a blue or a, or, a, or a pink, right? You don't want that. As an end user, as a painter, as an artist, as someone who wants it to last, you don't want that. If you digitalize your work, go with it, you know? If your scanner or camera can handle fluorescent colors, go with it. But as a painter um, who sells their paintings and wants it to be well, a piece of art on a wall, whether it is just decorative or, or uh, high art. You want it to last. You don't want it to hang in a living room or a gallery uh, where there are windows and, want, and, and, and see it fading, right? uh, unless it's part of, your, of the process of that piece of art. If you want that picture to, to stay that picture, you need to use pigments that are light fast. On my slab, powder, binder, mulling, I don't notice the difference between a light fast pigment, a pigment or uh, a non-light fast pigment. I just make paint out of it, but I don't make paint out of uh, the fluorescent pigments just because of that reason. And I can do it. If you want it, I have them. I can make custom paint, but I don't offer it because I want my paint to last as well. I want people to use my paint and, and uh, confidently just put them on their desks. And don't worry about sunlight hitting the pan. Right? The one thing that I notice when it comes to light fastness and pure pigments, dry pigments, are some very old bottles with lake pigments in them. So first of all, what are lake pigments? Um, just a very short explanation as well. A lake pigment is basically a dye uh, bound to a metallic salt um, uh, that is ground up to be a pigment. So dye bound to a substance. Um, so that substance, substance is 
uh, colored with that dye. It, it, it's bound to that, and that is ground up to be a, uh, a powder, a, a colored powder, a pigment. A dye can be a colored powder as well, but a dye is basically always not light fast. It fades. When it is bound to that metallic salt, um, it increases the light fastness rating, but it's still never perfect. Right, so it improves it, but you never can get something that is fully light fast. Lake pigments were used uh, for carmine, for instance, is a, is a very, very famous one. Um, indigo is a natural pigment as well, although it is highly light fast, one of the most light fast natural dyes uh, available. And there are loads and loads and loads of options um, and, 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 you know, different colors, especially historically, that were made like that. Um, a very famous one is Tyrian purple. And interestingly, when you look up the uh, famous historical pigments, you get uh, Paris green, you get Indian yellow, mummy brown, Tyrian violet or Tyrian purple, uh, a few others, but Tyrian purple is one that is made from, uh, well, seashells, um, but that's a dye. So what is one out of the, you know, thousands and thousands of little creatures needed to make uh, just a pan of paint? Um, it is a dye what you're getting from them. I cannot make paint out of Tyrian purple, the pure Tyrian purple. I cannot pick paint out of it. I can try it, but it gets muddy, it's, it, it gets grainy. Um, I've talked about uh, different l laboratories, uh, you know, about this subject that worked with that. And um, uh, the first already said to me, if you want to make paint out of this, you need to use purpurism. And purpurism is the lake pigment made out of Tyrian purple. I never found this online when I was looking for it. Maybe it's on there right now. I know it. I share it here with you. Purpurism is a lake pigment made out of Tyrian purple. Still light fastness, not perfect. Um, purpurism is one of the examples, uh, unfortunately, where I noticed this. Another very, uh, um, well, more obvious example is carmine. It is a red pigment, a lake pigment, and I have a big jar of it. And that's why that was so noticeable with this one. Um, the outside that touches the glass, so the outside of the, the pigment um, uh, that was in, in the bottle, was a pastel-like pink, a very light faded red. But when I opened the jar, I saw a bright, vibrant red inside where the sun didn't touch it. So the sun uh, just, you know, destroyed the color um, of the pigment itself. Only time I notice the real difference between uh, something that was covered by uh, the pigment itself, where it didn't go through the glass and touch the pigment, and inside of that bottle where I saw the original color as a paint maker. So light fastness can be tested yourself. If you want to test this, uh, just make a swatch. You can make a, a horizontal swatch and just cover half of it with a piece of paper or maybe some piece of paper so you can see the result after four weeks, after four months, after four years maybe. Um, you can take a piece of paper away every, every time so you can see the difference how much color is faded when you hang it in a window that is, you know, exposed to direct sunlight. But I trust most of my suppliers, um, my regular suppliers, I trust all of them. And with new suppliers, I need to test it sometimes. Um, so sometimes a pigment is so 
so much, uh, well, it's, it's, it's so famous, it's, it's so much used. Um, for instance, Ultramarine Blue. I don't need to test how light fast that, that is. That is. Um, for some pigments, I do need to test it. And it takes a while before I can make them or before I can sell them, uh, before I know the light fastness rating. Um, but I, I've i done that, I think, two times only, uh, where I really wasn't sure about it. Um, so if you want to check it yourself, there are options uh, online. You can, you can look it up, but there's loads of options. You can check it yourself. But as a paint maker, like I said, I don't notice any of it on my slab. Another thing is... When we're talking about differences between pigments, so one of the personality traits, how stable is a pigment? So how well does it react in uh, with acidity, for instance, or in an atmosphere where there's loads of sulfur? There are, there are pigments that lose color, change color, or darken. Uh, Losing color, or just, you know, that it completely fades away, could be a chemical reaction. But another chemical reaction that is well known is darkening of it. Um, a very famous one, where you can test this yourself, if you have the pigment, but please, I advise against it. Uh, Paris Green, the original Schweinfurte Grün. If you add something with sulfur to it, it darkens. So if you add cadmium yellow, which contains sulfur, to Paris green, it would, instead of, you know, a yellow and a green, gets a brighter or lighter green, it would darken. You can also do this with ultramarine blue, but since it contains sulfur as well, ultramarine is blue, Paris green, green, it would give a darker green already, so the, the difference would be uh, less noticeable with blue so I would suggest you know use yellow if you want to but please don't try it um, when you put a drop of acid on ultramarine blue it turns a highlighter yellow it turns a bright bright yellow it loses color and it just you know some I think some kind of yellow stays it doesn't like acid a lot. So a drop of lemon juice is a very fun experiment um, uh, when you want to try it wet and wet or, uh, or wet on dry. Uh, whatever technique you want to try, you will see a reaction quite quickly with ultramarine blue. There are ultramarines that have been uh, coated so they can uh, resist that reaction. But most of them react like this. It's a very good way to check if you if you have ultramarine green, for instance, another extinct discontinued pigment, uh, if it's the real thing. I have loads and loads of bottles that said ultramarine green, which were mixes, unfortunately. Some of them reacted a little bit because it was mixed with ultramarine blue. Um, but if you see genuine ultramarine green, the reaction of it, uh, you know it's the real thing. So these are things that I don't notice um, wh while making paint. I need to keep them in mind. I need to uh, think about my customers. I need to think about my product. Um, and I don't want my pan to fade. I don't want it to, to change color. I don't want... There are some things that are out of my control, um, unfortunately. Malachite is one that is very, well, infamous for this. Um, it can turn yellow over time. It can just, because of the, um, uh, I think, copper content in it. The reaction with a binder or how pure the pigment is, is, is also a factor. Um, it can make it darken, even turn it brownish, uh, which is quite unfortunate if that happens. Um, but as something that is out of my control, 
unless I need to cut every pan in half to check if that happened to the paint because that's what happens. The outside layer may look perfect, but the inside uh, is, is darkened. Um, and I've, I've done this once and luckily I, um, I found a very nice green inside. Um, I had another pan which fell out of it, uh, out of the, I had a pan of paint and the paint fell out of the pan. And I noticed that that darkening happened on the bottom. Um, that was a little later and it was a different batch of pigment by the same supplier and that's quite unfortunate um, but that's not something I can check on my slab or with all the tools I use uh, as a quality check um, uh, the swatches look beautiful I let it dry I swatch it it looks beautiful but the reaction over time that that paint might have just happens sometimes um, so don't be too harsh on yourself if if any of those things especially with uh, minerals that contain some form of copper um, or lake pigments or whatever if you make things and it fades or changes color or it reacts on each other um, it's it's a part of the fun right it's um, it's good to know it in advance that you're not constantly surprised of what you're doing but it's also part of the process you need to learn, uh, or you need to write. You know, I have loads of books here, and I know a lot about pigments. Um, but I get surprised sometimes as well. And there are times that you want to be surprised when you're first working with a pigment. And, wow, this is new. Um, this is exciting. You don't want to be surprised when you fill 25 pans, for instance, uh, ready to be shipped. That's unfortunate if that happens, which also happened to me once. So, personalities of pigments. Like people, uh, they can make you smile, but they can be quite frustrating at times as well. They can surprise you, um, make you feel good, or they can make you doubt yourself and rethink what the well what you were doing right um so this is just why pigments are so interesting to me in other episodes i will start talking about different colors color families different pigments and all the things that are related to pigments and working with pigments i will try to go outside of my studio Go to locations where they are working with pigments as well. Hopefully you like this second episode. Please hit that like button. Smash the follow button if you don't follow me already. And please let me know in the comments down below what you want to hear about pigments next time. See you soon. And have a great and colorful day.